Take your CJ7 all the way to 11. Jeepers with cool guys. So on today's episode of Jeep with Cool Guy, we're gonna install the Dana 20 transfer case. As you can tell, I've already installed it. I'm gonna show you how I did it. First thing that you need to do before you install anything is to do a dry fit with your gasket. I, this was the gasket that came with my kit. Um, I'll put a link in the description to that kit and that was the, the reseal or the rebuild kit for the Dana 20 that came with the seals, um, some of the bearings and a couple other components. The gasket itself, when I did a dry fit, I found that it was a little bit too tight up underneath the lip of the T150 and it was creating a bunch of the, the gasket so I just trimmed off a little bit there and I also trimmed off a little bit around this inner part because it wasn't fitting as cleanly around the, the rear bearing cup of the T150. So once you get that dry fit of the gasket done, you also want to do a dry fit of your transfer case. And that is just to help alleviate any um, fitting issues. Uh, and you, what you want to do is you want to shift your Dana 20 to the, I guess it would be the neutral position because what that's going to do is it's going to uh, disengage this rear drive shaft and it's going to push this sliding gear as deep into the transfer case as it can. So it gives you the most amount of area to slide the transfer case onto the rear drive shaft of the transmission and you don't have to jockey it and get the gears to mesh. Just uh, That's just a word of wisdom because this thing is seriously heavy and it's really hard to do it when you're trying to move the gears and get the thing fitted on there. So do a dry fit just to make sure everything sinks as well as it possibly can. So now I'm going to take some RTV, black RTV, and I'm going to run a thin film on both sides of the gasket and install it on the back of the T150 transmission. All right, just got this layered up with RTV. I've got a nice film on both sides made sure that there aren't any dry spots and there's also not of a, there aren't any areas where it's overly thick. There are multiple ports, holes in the back of the transmission that go directly into portholes on the Dana 20. So what that tells me is that there is transmission between the fluids. So that may be a uh, dictated by the gasket that you choose. So if you choose the gasket that has all of these holes or these cutouts filled in, then there's no uh, transfer of fluid between your T150 and your Dana 20. Take a look at the back of your, trans your transmission and see uh, if there are these open port holes that go into the transmission and if there's the, the, the transfer holes on your Dana 20 and that will dictate which gasket you're supposed to use. Once you get the gasket on there, uh, just grab a cloth and wipe off the, the gasket material that's going to get on the gear teeth. I don't think you can get it on there without getting something on there. So just make sure you clean up the gear teeth and this rear bearing cup housing. Uh, just make sure that you don't have any RTV uh, getting into places that it shouldn't get to. Okay, now for the fun part. Lift with your legs, not your back. This thing weighs, I don't know, 100 pounds? It's, it's a lot of solid steel. Lift it up. Slide it over the top of the gear gently. And try and get those teeth to mesh on that inside. There we go. Now we've got it seated. Let's kind of work it on. There, we're in. All right, one thing I will recommend is prep yourself. Have at least one bolt, mounting bolt, ready to go. Um, otherwise, you're gonna get yourself into a precarious sp spot where you don't, you're not able to mount the thing because you can't get it in the right place and you don't have your bolts ready to go. All you need is one just to hold it into place. Cool, we're in. All right, I am using, or these are 3 8 inch bolts 
and the, I think they're an inch in length and I'm putting a um, lock washer on each one of these. These are also grade eight. Uh, if you want, you want to make sure that you've got some pretty strong bolts because this is your transfer case to your transmission. Um, you don't want anything that's uh, gonna give out when uh, you put some stress on this thing. Now putting these things back into place, the, the way that they've got it configured, you've just got enough space to get like a crescent wrench in there or the end of a uh, just a, a basic wrench. Um, for the most part, you're not going to be able to get sockets into almost all of these outside of the, the couple of the top and the bottom two. And also remember, there is one that goes right in between the this channel here that runs the length between your shift arm and the tra the transmission case. That is really hard to get to, and it's down in the bottom. Um, I don't know if I can get a camera angle in there, but let me see. So that bolt is this one right here. Got it highlighted, hopefully you can see that with my finger. Anyways, that is a pain in the ass to get to. Uh, the only way that I've been able to uh, get my stuff configured, um, just because the spacing is so tight in there, is to use a S wrench like this. And you have to just go in from underneath and just do it a quarter of a turn at a time. All the bolts should be installed to 30 foot pounds. So it's gonna be very difficult to get <laughs> a torque wrench in there to know what 30 foot pounds is. So my only recommendation is to install the other bolts that are on the outside of the case to 30 foot pounds and see how tight that is and then try and hand do this or hand assess that one when you get to this one. All right, that's as tight as I can get it. You win. All right, so now that we've got all of the five bolts installed as tight as we can get that one, and all the other three have been set to 30 foot-pounds, we've now installed our Dana 20 transfer case. Public service announcement. Subscribe. Like and subscribe. Or dislike. Any one of the two. Helps me out. Helps the Jeepin' community out. Helps the CJ7 community out.